have a request to consider uh, a, a POCO request to join the legal action. Ms. Kelly? Hello again. Good evening. Hi. I am Laura Kelly, and I want to just thank this board for inviting me back. I will describe really briefly uh, what's going on for the public. I have two requests to the board. One is to write a letter to MDAR. Once MDAR approves the YOP, the Early Operational Plan, allowing herbicides to be used for vegetation management along rights-of-way power lines. Uh, this town has been great to uh, continue to write to them saying you don't want this, and I'd like that to continue to be on the record. Um, and that's very helpful. Request number two is, you know, each year we continue to write MDAR, um, this being the third year in a row, um, and it's not changing a word in the early operational plan. Um, I'm going forward to all 15 towns to ask they do the same thing, and towns have been great to uh, be on board with this whole mission. Um, continuing to write isn't doing anything. So I've read over the regulations by MDAR uh, with my lawyer, and we found the only <laughs> uh, next step that we can take other than writing. And considering writing isn't doing anything, uh, we last year uh, got together um, realizing that uh, to be called an aggrieved party I don't know if I brought up this with this board uh, a couple of weeks ago, but another group of people stated they were an aggrieved party uh, two years ago. And this was a mother-daughter uh, kind of scenario. And they were not granted to be called an aggrieved party at that time. So I'm going forward this time differently with a lawyer, with an ecotoxicologist, um, asking the towns to say they are an aggrieved party. Four towns last year said they would be glad to do this. Uh, the town of Brewster was first, thank you Brewster. Um, Orleans, East Ham, and Dennis. Uh, there was a, an amount of $15,000 last year per town to pay for the ecotoxicologist and the lawyer uh, to go to the state house at this adjudicatory hearing. In February, uh, it came back that we were not considered an aggrieved party because we were not sick. Sure. My whole point to all of this is to prevent us from becoming sick. Mm -hmm. So this year I come back to hoping four more towns. I've just been to Falmouth, Bourne, Mashby, Yarmouth, Tisbury's asking for a presentation. Um, and all the towns like Chatham have asked me, uh, asked, it's really fascinating for me to go through this. It's an exercise in my world. Uh, each town is looking for something different. You know, every town wants, uh, you know, different information. So I'm continuing to educate. Uh, not one town has said no. They've asked me to continue to come back until they're comfortable just to let you know how everything stands at this point. Um, I brought my lawyer here who was present, uh, Attorney Bruce Taub, last time, as you recall, and have written to you folks with what, you know, I believe you requested. And thank you for allowing me to come back. This year the cost is $7,500. Why? Because there, we did not use all from, let's just call it the, the bucket from last year. Okay, so that is still available. The four towns involved have allowed that to stay and they wish to continue forward. So that's why I come saying uh, we request for $7,500 from the town. Um, this all goes to um, town administrator Michael Embry from Brewster. He's in charge of all the funding uh, and there is a quick um, uh, pamphlet to sign stating that you wish to be a part of this mission and allowing uh, attorney Bruce Taub to represent your town 
uh, as well as the other towns who wish to get involved. So this is the direction that we're headed in in order to prevent more herbicide use in this fashion. Uh, considering the state is not listening to the town's requests to not do this, this is the only viable next step. We've got everything lined up. We can, you know, be a part of what's already in motion. The case was left open because there were four things that needed to get covered last fall. It was August when we um, requested for this adjudicatory hearing. Three things were uh, granted. There's one left over. They said that the three things can fall over this year and that my lawyer and ecotoxicologist are quite confident. I wouldn't be here <laughs> if they weren't. I'm doing this on their word because <laughs> that's their court. This is mine. <laughs> um, and so uh, they're quite confident that we will be considered an aggrieved party this time around, uh, that the towns will be allowed an adjudicatory hearing with MDAR and the um, Massachusetts pesticide uh, panel, which consists of 13 people. So I am here tonight to ask the town if they have other questions and to move forward in hopes to make a vote on my request this evening. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. Dickens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome back, Laura. Um, Thank you for having me. For another presentation. Um, I, I, the, this has been picked up by the Cape Cod Times. I saw an editorial there. Um, I, I have a couple questions. In terms of the $7,500 ask, um, what continued expenses would, what kind of return do we get for that $7,500 other than a favorable ruling? Um, and wh why, are you, why are we convinced now that getting more towns will, will satisfy the judge that we've, we're all aggrieved parties? Uh, how do you get over that hump of that, that fourth condition of, of standing as an aggrieved party, I guess, is, is my basic question. And then what do we get for our $7,500 other than maybe clean water? You, you, you know I'm, uh, I, I look favorably upon your ask, and I think we voted as a board to write the letter when Correct. MDAR. Correct, April 2017. We, right. we, have a, we have a draft letter. Yeah, well, so we have a letter ready to go. Thank so I think, I think you came the last time, and I think we were on board with number one. Wonderful. So I think your real ask today is for number two. And, and then have any towns um, made their financial commitment contingent upon other towns joining? So uh, got, you've got four towns now. I don't mean to interrupt you, but we, we have Brewster, Orleans, East Ham, and Dennis. And you're asking Chad. I mean, I think you've been to Harwich. Um, but has anybody, any town said to you, you know, we'll, we'll chip in the 7,500 if you get, you know, five other towns or ten other towns? No one's asked you that. Okay, and then I guess my basic question is, how do more towns have more, make your argument more substantial on the aggrieved party issue, on the fourth condition? Yeah, so that's um, a, a lawyer question. I apologize. Yeah. I don't know the exact terminology that will be used that day uh, in court. Uh, that's between uh, the ecotoxicologist and the lawyer, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> um, so all I know is that the three things of last year will actually be not necessary for this year. And the fourth okay. thing, well, and they, they said that they've got it. And they, so that so all systems are go, we're moving forward. I can't tell you what the strategy is on the fourth thing. I'm sorry, I just, just don't. Just a couple follow-ups. Do you have any idea when MDAR is gonna come down with their ruling? <laughs> I mean, I think we asked you that last time. It could I, yeah. be this summer, it could be this fall, and we don't know. It, um, okay, so I, in my best knowledge, it needs to be before August because that's when they actually apply the th three out of six towns on Martha's Vineyard. They won't start Cape Cod till September, uh, just because of in the past, I believe that's true. Um, so it needs this windows, right? Okay, so there's a 21 day window and then a 10 day window. So what's that 31 days? Yep. Uh, so it needs to be 31 days. So it's like backing up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it needs to be 31 days before they actually do spray. Um, so that's my best knowledge. They could have 
three days after the comment period, which was back in March, I believe. Mm. And they usually do that three days after the comment period is closed. They just carte blank, go ahead. So uh, considering there's pressure on them, nobody has asked this. Nobody has given any sort of um, you know strength, I call it muscle, uh, and asked MDAR to have an adjudicatory hearing under these circumstances, we believe that they're, you know, trying to dot their I's and cross their T's up there. This has never happened. So we feel as though, well, this, is, this is just all hearsay. We don't know for sure. Um, but we're taking advantage of the time, going to other towns, simply believing that if it's four towns, that's fine. If it's six towns or eight towns, that's just better. Mm -hmm. more proof that more towns are standing up for their drinking water i mean look at the epa it's it's things are crumbling we've got to on a lower level here back home start taking care of ourselves oh, much stronger than we have been and this is one case that well, we can I, I just i hearken back to the issue barnstable has with the you know the the firing range there i mean it's just it's it's awful so but now uh, has the e-toxicologist been paid Yes, uh, last year for studying the situation, uh, for writing an affidavit, for doing what is needed uh, with the lawyer. Uh, again, it's more uh, an understanding of what is going on in Cape Cod. He lives in Washington State. Yeah. Um, and he's been great to work with us so closely. I mean, I can pick up the phone. I can call him on a Saturday once and he answered. Hey, Laura, what's up? You huh. know, so. Um, Yes, there is some funding that has gone to both the lawyer and the ecotoxicologist last year. Nothing has been given to them this year. Nothing has been done on their levels. Okay, and then I guess not so sure. We got I got an answer on the seventy five hundred. What does that buy? What does that? Is that what, buy what, what, what expenses are, are? Do you have? I guess I asked about the ecotoxicologist because I was wondering if right. he, he had been paid and are there continuing expenses? It's just legal expenses. Is it? We're really capping off the situation. My lawyer has said I will only accept thirty-two thousand okay. dollars from beginning, middle to end. If it does, if it's more time involved, et cetera, he has capped himself off, uh, willing to give the rest to the ecotoxicologist on an as-needed basis. If there's anything left over, of course, it'll be divided, you know, equally through the Brewster town administrator back to the towns. Uh, this is just a pocket of what we believe. Um, we don't, you know, okay, I'm going to throw in a curveball. We think we're going to fail at this level, the adjudicatory hearing. Yeah. Okay, we're at a panel with 13 Massachusetts board, boards, one member from each Massachusetts board. Going in, we're not saying that they are doing anything illegal, because they're not. Right? This is all approved by the Massachusetts State. Okay? We are going and saying that they are that they're not doing anything that they're implying correctly. Like that we're not even talking about anything like that. All we're saying is we are towns above an aquifer and we wish to be treated differently. Period. So that is our argument. We know through studies from around the world that other countries it is directly connected to deformation of children. I could go on. There's so many studies. And a different ecotoxicologist from uh, Woods Hole said to me, Laura, if it's happening there, don't you think it's happening here? How can it be different? And I said, well, of course it's different. There are different conditions, right? There's mountains and we're at the sea. We have sand. They have inches of organic soil. And he said, yeah, it's traveling faster here. That's the difference. So it's every time I learn something, I, it, it just gets me to come out to you guys more and faster and stronger. And really, this is um, the right thing to do in this situation, considering we don't know the effects over time. Do you know two days ago in the state of California, water is undrinkable for most of the state due to a pesticide? Not any of the five that I'm talking about today, so I don't want to directly correlate this. But the point is it's traveling, and it's 
absolutely doing harm. So I think this is just the first step in what townspeople can do to lessen their amount, what town officers can do to say, you know, maybe we shouldn't sell this in our stores. You know, this is the beginning of who knows what, but that's up to you guys. I'm not here today to talk about that. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and well, thank you, Laura. Welcome back. Um, I'm sympathetic to the principle that you're trying to achieve here um, and share the concern about the water supply and the environment being potentially impacted negatively by um, these chemical applications, but particularly glyphosate, if I'm pronouncing that right. Glyphosate, correct. Um, but I, I do have some questions about the process because it, it looks as though we're being asked to participate in the still open proceeding for 2016. That's correct. But that's a moot, it's effectively moot in practice because the spraying already occurred in 2016. Mm, so and not in the, f okay, so here's the trick. Okay, so last year there were four towns that were asked to be part of this uh, hearing. Uh, one of the towns, East Ham, was not even on the YOP. They, out of the greatness right. of their heart, said, but we still want to protect our aquifer, so they still gave the $15,000. The other three towns absolutely were on the YOP and did not get sprayed because this hearing was continuing to go on. So they were so, but exempt I, from recital applications I, under this. I guess I'm, and I, I appreciate your attorney's not here, so I don't want to get into the, is it here? Nope. Or Attorney okay. Bruce Tab is not here this yeah, I didn't evening. think he was here. Uh, so I don't want to get into the legal weeds here, but um, there's a footnote in the recommended decision of the hearing officer from the State Division of Administrative Law Appeals, um, where he basically says that, quote, the parties are aware that the pesticide board, and I guess, is that the group that's going to make the final decision? 13 people, yep has previously decided that appeals of yearly operating plans that are not resolved by the end of the year in which spraying is permitted are moot. They have requested nonetheless that I rule on the motions as the issues are likely to recur should the towns appeal any future spraying permits granted to Eversource. So there's going to be another proceeding, right? Correct. For 2017. Correct. So which are you asking us to buy into? Is it the 2016? It's still the same case. Yeah. Um, we, Would we there's become this a party? pre hearing conference. Yeah. That's as far as we got. The actual hearing was never, ha did not even happen because we didn't do the fourth thing that was needed. So he it, said it would leave it open. Three were accomplished. It is completely open. We're in go motion to get other towns to join the last year's towns to continue to move forward, knowing this fourth thing. So if we were to if we were to say yes to your request, we would be entering this two, this still open 2016. Correct. Proceeding. The hearing from last year. Yep. And what about 2017? Because there's going it's to be another one. It's the same one. We would be buying into that too, or are you going to be coming mm. back looking for an additional contribution? No, it's the same case, all the same. I'm sorry to confuse you with the years and stuff. It's an open case. There's a case that's open, and we can join and become a part of it and make it stronger. Well, I read the materials and. The hearing officer's denial of standing was essentially based on his conclusion that the towns had failed to show that there was a particularized risk of injury to the town's owned property. Um, and in, in particular, some of the towns, well, the towns simply came, as, came in as towns, as right. municipalities. And he said, um, if you could show that there was some um, section of the, of the water table or the aquifer within the town property that was actually being injured or at risk, and that, the, and that these boards of selectmen had some role, or the town as a town had some role with respect to that right. water usage, right, that, then, then that that would go some that would go towards establishing standing but they standing, didn't right now the interesting thing about Chatham is that this board of selectmen it happens to be the water and sewer commissioners as well so I don't know what you know whether or what I and mean, you heard Dr. Duncanson at the last couple of times you've been here saying okay. that um, what's what Eversource does is really no different from what ordinary property owners are doing 
when they mm. apply chemicals. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what he said. On one, only for one out of the five herbicides, I agree. That's Roundup, glyphosate. Mm. Mm -hmm. The other four are not even on the shelves. You know, you must be a Massachusetts state pesticides licensed applicator in order to get Garland 4, Amazapar, Triclofor. Um, homeowners cannot get their hands on that. So I agree with you wholeheartedly so, that uh, as homeowners, Roundup's uh, probably on sale right now. <laughs> this is probably an unfair question um, to so you. So standing, if you would... Uh, yeah. I would love to answer that. Um, I hear you saying, and I know it is in writing, they're waiting for us to prove it's in our drinking water. Um, our point is to not wait that long, okay? So there are other things that have come up on January 11th this year. Uh, the types of bees is now an endangered species. So again, it, it's a lawyer question where the lawyer and the ecotoxicologist have figured out how to say that the towns are standing without finding it exactly in the drinking well, well, water. Well, that's what I'm. So that's what I'm getting at. Is how you, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering how your attorney is going to draw a connection between the municipalities that that jump into this and the requisite finding or showing of of a particularized risk of injury. Um, yeah, and again, that's them on their level. Of, that's the, and I can't answer that. I'm not the yeah. toxicologist or the lawyer. Let but me ask again, you one other question. Um, so uh, you mentioned that you had gone to Harwich. What is their town of Harwich? What is their position? Are they? They say the in? EPA allows this. That it is fine. It's legal. Happy so they're day. they're not going to do it. Harwich will not. I won't return to them unless I get six or eight towns, and then I there's time still, and I, you know, they allow me to come back. I'll say, by the way, this is the update, and if you'd like to join and be a fellow neighbor town, that's great, because you do share uh, a lens with Harwich and Brewster, and so it is in our best interest in our neighboring towns. There's six lenses on the Cape. So you guys have your own lens of water here. So what happens in Chatham and Brewster and Harwich is quite relative as far as drinking water goes. So it's in our best interest to kind of give them a nudge and say, hey, we care, how about you? You know, and that's kind of the way I'm is hoping the, to approach, re-approach them. Is the town manager, if that's the right term, of Brewster sequestering these funds from Brewster monies? Yes. Yep. So he's basically set up an account, Correct. collected the monies from the four towns, Correct. and he, he approves the expenditures. Yes. Yep. Or, it's, or he's in them. charge of receiving and then um, Do giving. the individual towns get a say on the approval of the expenditures, or does he run it by them? The you know? uh, approval of expenditures is for two people only, yeah. and they bill uh, appropriate to their time when there's a, something that they do. And at this point, they haven't been doing anything. Well, I guess the question year. is, that does does Mr. Embry send those bills to the to his counterparts in the other towns for He'd a sign-off? He'd be glad off? to. Yep. Yep. That's easy. Sure. Would, would you um, just picking up on this is the last question? I'm picking sure. up on something that uh, Mr. Dykins inquired about. How would you feel if the town of Chatham were to say we 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 will um, we're willing to sign up, but it's contingent on your being a, being successful in convincing two or three other towns to jump in? I um, I suppose you'd have to take it because it's better than nothing. Better right? no. uh, it's completely up to the board of Chatham how they wish to proceed to protecting their waters in this matter for that amount of money. I see this as a little amount of money. Uh, it is a it's a not to belittle the amount of money, but compared to the possibility, uh, Harwich is not going to get involved. Um, Brewster already is, so part of your lens, it's half and half so far for your particular lens, you know. Um, so that's something for you guys to really take in high consideration. And I see it also as if you are willing to move forward, then perhaps other towns will follow. That's the way it, went. it worked last year. Brewster went first, Orleans, the rest just said great, mm. you know. So that's the other possibility. Falmouth is, you know, I'm going to ask me back next. Mashby, I think I'm on the agenda again. Bourne uh, and, and Yarmouth. 
So those are the four other Cape towns. Uh, and then Tisbury, um, able to incorporate the three towns uh, on Martha's Vineyard that will be being sprayed. Um, so that's the direction that we're headed in, and we would really love Chatham to be a part of this. Mr. Chairman, do we have any money for this? I was just going to ask yeah. that if, if we were to entertain um, contributing anything to it, where would those funds come from? I don't have a particular line item, but I do have a consulting and engineering account that would have a balance to sustain this if the board was interested in it. Okay. Um, Ms. Love, Hesher. Will the dollar amount decrease uh, should other towns come on board? No. no well, stay that 75. I, that's, I'm going to just, that's again not my department. I'm going to say that loosely. We don't expect them to use every dime. Okay. Uh, um, um, it's kind of a little bit of a, a mush pocket in case there's things needed that we can't foresee. Okay. And yes, if there's anything left over, by all means, it's just for this hearing only. Okay. That's it. Got and it. only these two people involved. That's it. Okay. Not for polka. We're doing this out of the kindness of our hearts. So. Great. Thank, thank you. Mr. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, thank you. Uh, Laura, the... Um, the, uh, did I understand it correctly that the towns that joined this last year um, were, were not sprayed last year? Correct. Okay. And would you suspect uh, that that would continue if Chatham were to join, we wouldn't be sprayed this year? You don't, you don't know or we don't know that yet? So we're not so... Okay. The, the other question I have is... I would say sure. Yeah, I, I, know, and I would think that's if, if history is any... That's Eversource uh, deal. Right. They got going on up there. So. This is really a regional issue. Correct. And, you, and you're, at, you're, you're attacking a town by town, but it really is a regional issue. It's a regional issue because not only do we have a, you know, one lens down, the, down this end of the Cape, which we're very familiar with and, and very sensitive to um, its, its maintenance, but it, 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 we have this, you know, this, uh, this underwater river, this sole source aquifer that runs underneath the Cape and the islands or in Martha's Vineyard. So, you know, it really is a regional issue and I think we ought to be attacking it regionally I applaud your effort. You know, I'm very supportive. Um, but have you been to county government at all? Have you been to, to the, the Barnstable County Board? Have you been there? Yes, in, in, in the past, in, in the in very beginning. This was, I'm even going to say, eight years ago. Uh, they were absolutely on board, and they helped us get three moratoriums. One, Eversource, I don't know if I'll be able to list all three, but one, Eversource didn't even know that like the town of East Ham is all reliant on wells along their power lines. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole town is reliant on well water. That's private wells. And so we were granted a year to go to all 15 towns to write a map of all the public and private wells. You know, so each year there was something dramatic like that, that, that oh, geez, we got to do that first. Oh, you're right. Okay. You know, and then this will be year number five that they've been spraying eight, nine, and not, there are 10 towns on the Cape, on the YOP this year. And they say they're going to use less over time. Uh, the two years I actually have requested through the governor, Patrick, to get the results from 2015 and 2014, it's thousands of gallons of herbicides, hmm? unnecessary use of herbicides in this manner when they can go back to mowing or any other alternative that's successful that the towns want to do. I do not have, I've asked for the records for the next two years through the latest governor still holding my breath mm -hmm. uh, and I do want to do a comparison sheet to see if it is true that they are using less over time they say they're spot treating now but it's 10 towns not eight towns you know so does that equal the same amount in the end I don't know these the answers there's so many unanswered questions for me uh, in the meantime we need to move forward to do all we can to say we want to know chemical spray on our land whatsoever, period. Ms. Kelly, like, I know you're going town to town and, and diligently working on this. I mean, you got to have like a, a kind of a date that you want to get a, an, abs an answer basically by. Do you have a date in, your, in mind? An answer by for? For, uh, for, for, for each town to make a decision if we're going to contribute. I want the answer um, by the time MDAR says they approve the YOP, then I have 21 days. That's the date that I need all the answers from the towns. I don't know. That could happen this Friday, right. and then we have 21 days, and I can't get back to all these towns in that time. 
you know, so I'm doing all I can to say, oh, this is great, I've got the time, I'm hoofing it, going, you know, two towns a week I'm hitting. Um, so there will be, you know, that cutoff point. And so I'm just educating as best I can and allow people to be comfortable uh, knowing they're doing the right thing. I would love to say that if you guys wish to write another letter to our county to see if they would get involved, that would be fine on my part. I'll do my end as well. They seem to say things like they're really busy with the 208 wastewater, which they have been, you know, so I kind of see it as it's not as important. But here we are again, another five years have gone by, you know, so if, if anybody wants to help jog them, I'd be glad to, you know, be a part of that as well. Um, I'd like to make a motion to to move this along um, and approve the letter to be written and appropriate the funds that Mrs. Kelly is, Miss Kelly is Thank you. suggested. Okay, do I hear a second? Yeah, second, absolutely. Okay, discussion. Yeah, I, I'm very supportive. Um, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, first of all, Selectman has water and sewer commissioners, but more important as, as citizens and, and residents that we take a leadership role um, and protect our, protect our water supply. And, and you know, I, I, why would we wait to see if there's harm done by these herbicides? Why, why would we wait to see that? I don't want to wait. I, I, I want them to stop. So I think there's other ways to control vegetation along power lines, and you can, you know, cut it with mowers and, and string trimmers and et cetera. So why, why dump chemicals into the ground if you don't have to? And they don't have to. So I, I, I strongly prefer to take a leadership role um, certainly, we've already voted to write the letter, and I, and I would support the expenditure of $7,500. I'm not quite certain what we're buying for that $7,500, to be quite frank with you, but I'm willing to make the statement that Chatham is willing to commit and be a leader um, here. As, um, and that's all. I, I would support the, I will vote for the, okay. for the motion. Mr. Castro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to support the motion as well, and for the similar reasons to what um, Selectman Dykins was just saying. Um, I would encourage you, uh, if we do vote uh, this tonight, um, to uh, make sure that uh, Attorney Ta Taub understands that we are the Water and Sewer Commissioners, because I think that's a critical point legally. Um, I I'd like to amend the motion to add that the Board of Selectmen or the Town of Chatham um, send a, a communication to the county yeah. uh, commissioners. Um, urging them to um, support this effort, if yeah. that's acceptable. Oh, that's great, yeah. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Okay. So. Okay, uh, any comments from the audience? Second to the amendment. Okay, second, okay, sorry. So, uh, no, so we need a second to the amendment, if we second. could. Second, okay. Um, the motion on the table, um, I, I'm gonna support it. I mean, I, I think the, I mean, the letter we've all supported. Uh, last time you were here, you were looking for a little bit more. You said come back, get some more support. The, we went from 15 to 75, so we're heading in a more favorable direction from an economic point of view. But I, I think for 7,500, it's, it's, it's a uh, valuable uh, process. So with a motion on the table, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Bless you guys. Thank, Thank you very Thank much. You and we will be in touch very soon. You're very diligent. I look forward to working very closely yep. with you. Thank yep. you.